Hello everyone and welcome to Sky Scholar. Today, basic concepts in spectroscopy will be presented such that everyone can become more comfortable with these presentations. As a result, we are leaving astrophysics for a moment and turn to electronic configurations, Crotrian diagrams, and term symbols. We begin with how electron configurations are determined for an atom or ion. Of course, electrons and atoms are contained in electronic orbitals, which represent a probability function of finding the electron in space at a particular location around the nucleus. Electronic orbitals are characterized by three quantum numbers. The principal quantum number denotes the energy level with which the orbital is associated. Principal quantum numbers are usually denoted by a lowercase letter n and range in increasing energy from 1 through 7 for the known atoms of the periodic table. The second quantum number is called the orbital angular momentum quantum number, or little l. It defines the shape of the orbital. As a result, there are four types of electronic orbitals, namely s, p, d, and f, as represented here. Next, each of these electronic orbitals is also characterized by a magnetic quantum number, m sub l, which is associated with the spatial orientation of the orbital. For each orbital, each geometric representation is associated with a particular magnetic quantum number, and both are therefore presented. Note that the s orbital is spherically symmetric. It has an orbital angular quantum number equal to zero, and its magnetic quantum number is therefore also equal to zero. Next, you will notice that there are three p orbitals, and they are arranged relative to the x, z, and y axis with magnetic quantum numbers of one, zero, and minus one respectively. Note that the p orbitals each possess two lobes separated by a nodal plane exactly at their center, the position of the nucleus. There are five d orbitals and seven f orbitals which differ both in the shape of their probability functions and their geometry. Again, these orbitals have specific geometric alignments and they are characterized by magnetic quantum numbers 2, 1, 0, minus 1, and minus 2 for the d orbitals and 3, 2, 1, 0, minus 1, minus 2, and minus 3 for the f orbitals. The magnetic quantum numbers m sub l are utilized in describing which exact orbitals are filled. This becomes important as we will see below when describing what term symbols represent. In any case, note that each orbital can only hold two electrons and these two electrons are characterized by the electron spin quantum numbers m sub s. When electrons are paired within an orbital, their electron spin quantum numbers must have opposite signs. There is a governing convention when determining the ground state of an atom which states that within a given sublevel, every orbital must be singly occupied with an electron before any electrons are paired. Therefore, if three electrons must be placed in p orbitals, a single electron should be placed in each orbital and no pairing of electrons should occur. In that case, all the electrons should also have the same spin, usually taken as plus one half. If you have four electrons, then you can pair two in the first m sub l equal one shell and so on. The rule about how spins are arranged in orbitals in the ground state is known as Hund's rule. Now, if you examine the periodic table, you will see that its configuration is precisely governed by electronic configuration. Hydrogen and helium are filling the first s shell. The alkali and alkaline metals are also filling S shells. The P block is being filled on the right of the table concluding with the noble gases. The transition elements are filling D shells and the inner transition elements are filling F shells. Here is a useful schematic representation of how the shells are typically filled as denoted by the arrow directions. The number in front of each orbital type denotes the principal quantum number of the orbital as we saw above. Here is a list of principal quantum numbers and the types of orbitals they contain. Generally speaking, the higher the principal quantum number, the higher the orbital energy involved. But this is not strictly true, and that is why the 3D shell is filled between the 4S and 4P orbitals. The 3D orbitals are actually slightly lower in energy than the 4P orbitals. Depending on principal quantum numbers, the S orbitals can hold a total of two electrons, the P orbitals can hold six, the d orbitals can hold 10, and the f orbitals can hold 14. Now, in order to write the electronic configuration of an atom, one simply looks at the atomic number and arranges the electrons following the rules outlined by the arrows. Here are a few examples. For instance, the atomic number of iron is 26, and these 26 electrons are arranged as follows. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 
3d6. Similarly, iodine has an atomic number of 53, and these 53 electrons are arranged as follows. 1s2, 2s2, 2p6, 3s2, 3p6, 4s2, 3d10, 4p6, 5s2, 4d10, 5p5. To simplify how electronic configurations are written, one typically takes all the orbitals that are filled when reaching a noble gas and replaces them by this notation. So the simplified description for iron is argon 4s2 3d6. Whereas for iodine, the simplified notation is krypton 5s2 4d10 5p5. In this case, the noble gas listed in the square bracket just precedes the remaining outer shells. If one wants to know the electronic configuration of a cation rather than a neutral atom, an appropriate number of electrons will be removed from the outermost orbitals. For anions, the appropriate number of electrons will be added. Generally, such an approach will give the ground state of these ions, with some exceptions. As a rule, atoms also prefer filled and half-filled shells. Consequently, the ground state electron configuration for molybdenum is krypton 5s1, 4d5 and not krypton 5s2 4d4. Note that in the ground state, molybdenum actually has two half-filled shells. Similarly, the ground state for ruthenium is actually krypton 5s1 4d7 and not krypton 5s2 4d6 because in the ground state, ruthenium actually has one half-filled S shell. Of course, electronic configurations tell us something important about each atom and that will be vital to understanding how it reacts chemically. As a rule, atoms which have closed shells do not like to disrupt those shells, especially closed P shells, which leads to the noble gases. This is somewhat less true for the closed S, D, and F shells, although helium, for instance, has a closed S shell and is usually considered with the noble gases. Nonetheless, this is not how one should be thinking about helium on the sun, where it is clearly not behaving as a noble gas. In that case, it would be best to think of helium as a group 2A element, as I hope to elucidate in a future video. Group 2A atoms also have a closed S shell. In the group 2 case, one will find that reactivity of the elements increases with atomic number down the group. Beryllium is more likely to keep its closed S shell than calcium, for instance. For the spectroscopist, what is interesting about electrons is that they make transitions between electronic orbitals when atoms either absorb or emit light, or when atoms are subjected to a change in angular momentum due to chemical interactions. In order to get a sense of the transitions possible for an individual atom, chemists have recourse to Grotrian diagrams. Here, for instance, is a Grotrian diagram for magnesium. On this diagram, the position of the electronic orbitals is displayed relative to the ordinate axis on the left, denoting the energy involved. The spacing between the energy levels gets closer and closer as higher orbitals are reached. At the bottom of the Grotrian diagram, term symbols are listed. A term symbol is typically represented in this manner. Term symbols provide a means to summarize every aspect of the electronic configuration of the atom, whether electrons are paired or not in a given shell, and what shells are occupied. In determining the value of a term symbol, electrons occupying filled subshells are not considered. As a result, if two electrons are present in an S orbital and a partially filled P orbital exists, then the electrons in the S orbital will make no contribution to the final term symbol. Likewise, if six electrons are present in a P subshell, they will also make no contribution to the final term symbol. Let us analyze in detail what each portion of the term symbol represents. For instance, the letter S reveals the total spin quantum number of the atom. 2S plus 1 is known as the multiplicity of the term symbol. Usually the value of S is determined and only the multiplicity is presented in the upper left. Of course, since the multiplicity is equal to 2S plus 1, if one presents the multiplicity, then one knows the value of S. Now let us see how multiplicity is determined. An electron can have a spin of either plus one half or minus one half. If all electrons are paired, then spin will equal zero. This is because plus one half plus minus one half is equal to zero. When referring to multiplicity in this case, spectroscopists will say that a singlet state exists. As another example, if there is a single unpaired electron, then S will equal to one half and the multiplicity will be equal to two because 2s plus 1 in that case equals 2, and a doublet is produced. 
If there are two unpaired electrons of equal spin plus one half, then S will equal one, the multiplicity will be equal to three, and a triplet state is formed. The total orbital quantum number, temporarily represented here by the letter L, can take on various letter designations as follows. These are associated with possible values of the total orbital quantum number. Now how does one determine what is the total orbital quantum number and therefore what letter to use to replace the letter L? In reality, it is very easy. Just look at how electrons are placed in the outer orbitals. Those orbitals, as we saw above, are characterized by magnetic quantum numbers. In order to determine the total orbital quantum number, one just has to take the sum of the magnetic quantum numbers for all the electrons occupying outer shells, irrespective of whether or not the electron spin is up or down. So if an orbital contains two electrons, then two times the magnetic quantum number for that orbital has to be counted. At times, one will note a little superscript O on the upper right of the term symbol. This refers to what is known as the parity of the term. It will be present if there is an odd number of electrons in either P or F subshells. If the number of electrons in such shells are even, or if there are only electrons in S or D shells, then the parity is even and no superscript O is found. Finally, a small subscript is typically noted on the right of the term symbol. This represents the value of the total angular momentum for this level, J. For our purposes, we can skip how the value of J is determined, as this can be rather complicated, and the rules depend on how the outer shells are filled. For our purposes, we can just treat the total spin quantum number, the multiplicity, the total orbital quantum number, and the parity. In the NIST tables, the term symbols are always provided, and the value of the total angular momentum, J, for the state of interest is listed separately next to the term symbol. In order to help everyone better understand term symbols, let us go through a few examples. We begin with helium. It has a 1s2 electronic configuration. So what is its term symbol? First, we must determine the multiplicity. There are two electrons in the s shell which are paired, therefore the total spin quantum number is equal to 1 half plus minus 1 half, which is zero. The multiplicity of the term is therefore one, which is two times zero plus one. So we are dealing with a singlet. Next, what is the total orbital quantum number? Since both electrons are in an S shell, and since the magnetic quantum number m sub l for an S shell is zero, then zero plus zero is equal to zero, and the total orbital quantum number is zero, which is represented by the letter S. So we have already learned something about the group 2a elements as well. Their ground state term symbols will all be like helium, namely singlet s. This is because like helium, their outer electronic orbitals are all s orbitals with filled shells. Now note that the s designation in this case has nothing to do with the fact that the electrons were initially in an s shell. To take the point home, let us determine the term symbol for nitrogen. The electron configuration of nitrogen is 1s2, 2s2, 2p3. In order to concentrate on just the outer electrons, we can write this electron configuration as helium 2s2 2p3. Now when determining term symbols, fill shells make no contribution to the final term, so we can ignore the 2s2 electrons as they represent a filled shell. We only have to deal with the 3p electrons. According to Hund's rule, in the ground state we have to place the electrons this way in the 2p orbitals. One electron spin up in each orbital. We can then determine the term symbol. S in this case will be the sum of electron spins, which is one half plus one half plus one half, which is equal to three halves. So the multiplicity of the term will be a quadruplet, as two s plus one in this case equals four. Next, we have to determine the orbital quantum number. Since we have one electron in each p shell, then L is equal to the sum of the m sub L values or one plus zero plus minus one, which is equal to zero. So once again, we have an S term symbol. Since we have three electrons in a P shell and that number of electrons is odd, then the parity is indicated as odd with a right hand superscript O. So the term symbol is quadruplet S with parity indicated. As before, we have an S term symbol, but the electrons governing the term symbol were in P orbitals, not S orbitals. Remember, the letter adopted for the term symbol represents the orbital quantum number, not the type of orbitals involved. 
Let's have a look at another example. This time, let us look at a transition as reported by the NIST and see what term symbols are telling us about the electrons involved. In fact, this is usually what is done. The term symbol is given in a transition table and the spectroscopist then thinks about how the electrons are arranged. For our example, I have selected a transition for the neutral oxygen atom which is seen in the laboratory but not observed on the sun. The transition occurs at 878 angstroms and involves a transition from the 2s2 2p4 ground state of oxygen to the 2s2 2p3 3s excited state. The term symbols are given by the NIST as triplet P for the ground state to triplet P with parity indicated by the superscript O for the excited state. Now let us arrange our electrons. For the ground state, the answer is easy. Two electrons are paired in the S shell and four electrons are placed in the P shell. We pair two electrons in the M sub L equal one shell, place one in the M sub L equal zero shell and one in the M sub L equal minus one shell. Once again, the filled S shell does not contribute to the term symbol. There are two unpaired electrons in the P shell, so the parity is even and no superscript is found on the upper right of the term symbol as a result. The S value is the sum of the individual spins, which in this case is one half plus one half is equal to one. The multiplicity is given by two S plus one and is therefore equal to three. We have a triplet state. The total orbital quantum number is determined by summing the m sub l values. In this case, we have 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus minus 1, which is equal to 1. So the term symbol must be denoted by the letter p corresponding to a value of 1. Now let us consider the upper energy state with the electron configuration 2s2, 2p3, 3s, and a triplet p term with parity indicated. How are the electrons arranged? To begin, we can once again ignore the 2s shell as it is filled. So we have to think of the electrons in the 2p orbitals and the half-filled 3s orbital. We start with the fact that we know that a triplet state exists and we have parity. We also know that no electron changed its spin state during the transition because we went from a triplet state to a triplet state. Given all this information, we must place the electrons in the 2p and 3s shells. The transition came from the ground state and one electron made the transition to the 3s level. Now which electron was it? In the end we can have one of these four scenarios. The first two can be immediately eliminated because they would result in an s term symbol. This is because if we sum the m sub l values we would have 1 plus 0 plus minus 1 for the p orbitals and plus 0 for the electron in the s orbital. That makes a sum of 0 which would be an s term symbol. So the first two cases are not the answer and can be eliminated. There are two possibilities left. Let us consider the third case. In this instance, the electron in the m sub l equals zero shell makes the transition. The resultant term symbol will be the needed triplet p with parity because the s value is now one half plus one half which is equal to one resulting in a triplet. The orbital quantum number remains equal to 1 and given by 1 plus 1 minus 1 for the electrons in the p orbital and plus 0 for the electron in the 3s orbital. The sum of all that for L is equal to 1. So we have a triplet p state with parity. This must be the transition taking place. If you examine the fourth possibility, you will come to the conclusion that the term symbol is now a triplet d state with parity. Two electrons are found in the m sub l equal 1 orbital and the other electrons reside in m sub l equal 0, p and s orbitals. So the orbital quantum number we have is 1 plus 1 plus 0 plus 0 which equals 2. Since the orbital quantum number is equal to 2, the term symbol must therefore be d. There is an odd number of electrons once again in the p orbitals, so we have parity. Hopefully this brief illustration has clarified references to electronic configuration, Rotarian diagrams, and term symbols. But again, on this channel, you do not need to worry too much about term symbols as I will be interpreting them for you. In any event, in this and future videos, I will be determining how electrons are moving and in doing so, I will be making use of term symbols. Well, that is all for now. If you enjoyed the video today, promote the channel, mention the videos to your friends and to your local astronomy club, support me with a like, and subscribe for more videos as we look more closely at the sun, the stars, and beyond. Comments are always welcome down below, and I'll see you soon 
on our next video.